Hello and welcome back to another episode of whatever the heck I'm calling this. Bedford and the beer. Beer, Bedford. Beer, beer, Bedford, Bedford. That thing. Anyways, the place where I talk about beer. Tonight, as promised, I am drinking the uh, element number one, Doppelbach, by Black Raven Brewing. This is the sister beer, brother beer, brother beer, uh, sister beer, to the element number four of uh, that we previously reviewed. Um, this is the malt element. Uh, so to reiterate, the four elements of beer are malt, hops, yeast, and water. Those four things comprise beer. Something made of those is probably beer. Something made with the combination, those plus something else is probably a variety of beer. Um, so this is malt. Uh, being a malt, malt is grains, uh, primarily barley, but uh, historically at least, uh, more commonly in what we call the macro beers. That's the ones made by the big beer makers these days. Um, that's an increasing amount of corn you also find rice as a relatively um, prominent um, source of malt. Uh, the malt is heated to actually begin the germination process for most of the grains because uh, there's nothing quite so good at breaking down grain to turn it into sugars as the germination process of that grain. Um, the so malt is is what you turn the grain into uh, to produce beer. Uh, the different sorts of malt, different sources of malt will produce different sorts of sugars, different amounts of sugars, which different types of yeast will then turn into different levels of alcohol. In general, you would expect a maltier beer to have a higher potential alcohol content. Um, and in fact, this being a doppelbach, uh, doppel means double, literally. Um, so a bach is generally a dark beer. It's an ancient historic beer form. And a doppelbach is the doubling of that. Uh, not necessarily a literal doubling, but it's the same as the modern imperial form. That is, it's a beer style kind of taken up to 11. And this is one of the original beer styles taken to 11. Doppelbach was developed, as I understand it, by monks, as many beer styles were in Europe, um, and was one of the earlier forms of beer to, to earn the name liquid bread, because it was a very satisfying filling, especially in an era when beer was a safe food and was actually a very um, an effective way of storing the energy in grain for use elsewhere or at a different time, at a different time or place. Beer was convenient to carry. You could stick it in barrels and it wasn't going to go bad nearly so quick as that bread that would probably be bad a week after you baked it. Uh, that's actually a major part of the history of beer. Beer has always been a very effective way of storing energy. Think of it as a food energy battery. Just came up with that idea right now. Um, anyways, so this is a Doppelbach. That is a double bock, a double dark beer by Black Raven Brewing to celebrate malt. I am a self-acknowledged, self-proclaimed malt uh, fan. I like malts. And my goodness, is that a pretty color. Dang. Okay, let's just appreciate this for a moment. Wow, okay. So I would call this color honey or amber, um, probably an amber honey. It has a little bit of like some ruby to it, you know, that, that hint of red, which is why I'd say it's probably closer to an amber than a honey. But my goodness, is that a beautiful, <laughs> a beautiful beer. Uh, uh, things don't have to be beautiful to taste good, but when it comes together, you know, when it just, 
it it's just right, right? Okay. The head was pretty short once again. Um, so they haven't spent very much, um, or there, there wasn't much um, release of gas in the beer. I couldn't tell you what all that means, like I can what malt means. Um, but uh, the head was, it was there, but then it was gone. And it's, it's just barely, barely there now. Uh, okay, so pretty much I am getting straight the the malt notes. Uh, malt notes. It's grain. Malt is grain. Malt equals grain. Grain becomes malt. Um, so when you're smelling a beer that is a malty beer, or when you're smelling a beer, the malty flavors are the things that smell like other things grain are made of. Bread, crackers, um... You know, is it a is it like a, a fresh bread or an old bread? Is it a, a rye bread? Um, is it a, a white bread? Is it even a cornbread? Uh, this smells uh, faintly. It doesn't have a huge amount of aroma. It smells faintly of um, like bakery bread, a, a hearty, a decently hearty loaf. Not not kind of the caraway spiciness of a rye bread. Uh, not, not the dry note of a cracker, um, or the dry kind of saltiness of a cracker, uh, but more of like a, a hearty brown flour, brown wheat loaf. There also might be a little bit of olive note to that. That's interesting. I'm expecting this to taste round and smooth and hearty, just based on what I'm smelling. Well, let's dive in. Sweet. Okay, so this beer could probably get a lot higher in ABV if they added more yeast to it. Um, but there's there's a really nice sweetness. It's not not cloying, but it's there, um, and it's probably more of a honey sweetness. Uh, and then it's this big, just round, um, like bread dough. Uh, and yeah, I'm getting that. So it's not like olives in brine. It's like a real nice uh, green olive that that has been allowed to, that that hasn't been treated with a vinegar. Um, have you ever had? I, I don't know how much how how experienced you are in olives. Generally, black olives are are packaged in in a salt water, um, so they're mostly salty. Green olives are usually or Kalamata olives, red olives are usually almost pickled, I think, like in a, in a vinegar solution. But there's some that are left more in just like an olive oil um, kind of solution, and they're left really mellow. Uh, not quite mushroom levels of earthiness, but kind of halfway there. Um, and I'm, I'm getting kind of that, that kind of olive. I couldn't tell you exactly what kind, what the name of it is, um, but just a real, real kind of nice, um, earthy, uh, but not dark, more of a, a, a fresh earthiness, if that makes sense. So yeah, sweetness at the front, then kind of this olive, um, smooth, creaminess, um, a bit of booze. It is a six... 6.8%, so almost 7%. So, that, I mean, that qualifies as a relatively stiff beer. Um, and I know there's a... I keep using the word funky. You know, toe cheese, <laughs> skunks three miles away. I'm not saying that's what this beer smells like, but um, uh, maybe it's umami. It's that, that kind of... It's a, a meatiness. I, I used to describe a lot of beers. I like my beer to have it 
that kind of interesting funky note. Um, this one, it, it kind of has a similar funkiness. I'm, I'm not sure what else, to, how else to describe it though, because I don't, I don't know another thing that tastes like it. So I couldn't say this funkiness tastes like whatever. Um, this one, I'm sorry, that's totally a wild goose chase. This really doesn't have that sort of funkiness. It has a different sort of funkiness. Yay! Really descriptive terms for the win here. <sighs> nice job, Bedford. This has been Bedford scrabbling blindly at synonyms for <laughs> the flavors he can't name. <laughs> it's very smooth, all right? There is... There is close to no bitterness in here. Super smooth, sweet, a kind of olive earthiness. Um, the finish, it just stays there. And it's, uh, you know, it might not be honey so much as a, um, as a, it has different characteristics. Maybe honey at the front, um, but then it's more of a clean sweetness, like a table sugar sweetness, kind of as you finish it. Um, that definitely speaks to the malt. So, these malts have been developed. Uh, the, the color comes from how darkly they roasted the malts. So this is a red malt, most likely. Um, so they, they, they roasted a medium amount of time. Um, and then, and those allow the sugars to be released. And they didn't let the yeast take too much of the sugars. They left some of the sugars in there for that really delicious, this really just inviting sweetness. This, this is a really good beer. I'm not going to say it's you know the best Doppelbock I've ever had, or um, the sweetest beer or the biggest beer, but it's a good example of a beer that celebrates its malt, which is exactly what it's looking for. I mean, that, that's what it is. It is a beer about the malt. Um, this one is done in collaboration with Skagit Valley Malting. Skagit Valley is a local valley up here in the northwest. Um, Okay, so this was this was built with Pilsner, which is uh, you know Pilsners are very light beers, so Pilsner is a light beer. Munich is a little bit lighter than Pilsner, but less than Vienna, not quite so dark as Vienna. And just for comparison, most Mexican beers are Viennas. So if you're so you're looking at something that's really pale, Pilsner, and then something that's um, a little bit darker, but not much. Not even as dark as, you know, Land Shark or Corona. Um, so, so still pretty pale. And then Dark Munich. Dark Munich is a, I believe that's a red or brown um, level of malt. Uh, so, um, and that's all talking about the, the, the depth that they roasted this to. Um, and I'm guessing, based on this, that it was... All or mostly barley. That is the historic uh, malt source. I mentioned some of the others you'll see commonly in, in big beers. Um, but if you're celebrating the malt, that's what you're that's what you're doing. Is you're you're going to be using barley, um, possibly wheat, maybe a small amount of some additionals. Um, but anyways, this has been element number one malt, a Doppelbach in the core of four series by Black Raven Brewing, and it is a very nice exploration of malt and what it is and what it can do to make delicious beer. So I guess I will catch all y'all on the flip side.